Okay, I'm gonna tell you a fascinating story about this 1872 marriage certificate that was found in a thrift shop in the back of a painting. You might have seen this story. It's been picked up on a ton of local television stations, even the national media like Inside Edition, Miami Herald, People Magazine, and Fox News. The list keeps growing. A lot of these people have gotten a hold of this story and I had a big hand in, in this story as well. So honestly, I can't tell you how excited I am to tell you this story. You're not gonna wanna miss this one. Let me introduce myself first. My name is Connie Knox. I am a lifelong genealogist here to help you go further, faster, and factually with your family history research. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so that you get notified each time I upload a video like this one, because this is a fun one, all right? And Genealogy TV has a website, a newsletter, and a Facebook page. Links for all of that are in the show notes below. I have created a handout for this. Now, the handout is actually the research report that I created for this. And so if you want to see what a, a research report looks like, uh, you're going to be able to see that. If you are at the information access level channel membership, you can hit the join button to learn a little bit more about that. And uh, you can find it at genealogytv.org. All right, now, oh my gosh, I can't wait to tell you this story. It's, it started all one evening a few weeks ago while I was sitting in front of the television watching the local news. First up tonight, a romance spanning nearly 150 years, and now the hunt is on for the stars of this love story. It starts in Brunswick County, where the Hope Chest Thrift Store's Pam Phelps was cleaning an antique print. She found an almost 150-year-old marriage certificate hidden in the frame. The certificate is so old and so faded that you cannot make out the couple's last name, though it does say it was issued in 1875 in Bordentown, New Jersey, to William the Groom and Katie the Bride. The painting, which dates back to 1889, was donated last week, and now the store is trying to find any living family members and needs your help. We're going to try. In fact, we're trying now. So we've got it on Facebook, so we've got the word out. So if anybody has any idea or can help us at all, that would be great. Phelps says employees have many questions. The main one, why was the certificate hidden? We'll update this story when we learn. All right, well, you know me. I couldn't let that go. I had to get a hold of the thrift shop and learn a little bit more. Okay, so this was a Thursday evening and the weekend was coming. And I just, you know, I got to thinking about it and it was just like gnawing at me. So uh, the news report said that they couldn't read the last names, but they had the first names, a place, and a marriage date. And to me, that was enough information to do the research. So I got a hold of Carmen Smith, who is the executive director over there at the Hope Chest, which is the thrift shop in Brunswick County, North Carolina, where the marriage certificate was found. And I asked for better images of the certificate, and she went and sent them to me immediately, which was awesome. There they are. My plan was to work on this over the weekend, but it, I couldn't sleep thinking about it. As Friday came, I just couldn't let it go. It kept bugging me, so I jumped in and I got right to it. Instead of working on my next video, I went ahead and started working on this mystery marriage certificate from 1875, and who were these people? And how on earth did this marriage certificate get in the back of a painting? How I ended up in, from New Jersey uh, to a thrift shop in North Carolina, I have no idea. But here, <laughs> we're gonna tell you more about the story. So after three days of research, I was able to solve this mystery, and here's how I did it. In examining the images, I could see the last names well enough to know uh, that I could start a research. Either it was, the last name of William was either DeWorth or DeWert. We weren't quite sure. And that gave me enough information to start playing with it on Ancestry and Family Search. Now, the first clue came to me on Family Search. And now that I could see uh, kind of some of the marriage information from William DeWorth and Katie Havey, their marriage certificate clearly stated that the date was 11 April 1875. Now, there's more to that story here too, so stick around. 
and they were married in Bordentown, New Jersey. Well, the first step was to transcribe this document. And yes, I do that. And I do that because you will pull out all of that detail, all of that juicy goodness out of a document when you actually transcribe it. So yes, I do it. And because I did that, it led me to several clues to help find this family later on in the hunt. A quick search of Bordentown, New Jersey showed me that it, the county was Burlington, New Jersey. So that uh, gave me a little bit more information. Jumping on Ancestry.com, a search for William D. Worth and Katie Havey revealed several census records showing the couple living in the same town. But was that enough? No. I needed to know whether this was even the right family, right? So then I started a floating tree in my own tree uh, for this couple. Now I realize I'm not related to them, but I do this a lot. I'll either start a second tree, but I wanted to do it in my tree. I created a floating tree. If you want to learn more about floating trees, I'll leave a link on the, on the screen for you now as to how to get to the episode about floating trees. But a floating tree basically is a disconnected group of people within your tree, okay? And by doing so, this allowed hints to populate and assist in my research. Now, even though it was not my family, I went ahead and put this in the tree. This research will likely become valuable to somebody later on, so I just wanted to have it in my tree. Working through those hints, I collected several census records and city directories. Now, the city directories revealed addresses that corresponded with the names and occupations that I found on the census records. So things are starting to tie together, right? Using the census records in combination with the city directories can be incredibly valuable. It's a really powerful combination to tie people together in, in dates and places. And the cool part about doing that is the city directories can also help fill in the blanks between census records, okay? So I was able to uh, then take some of that information from the city directories and I jumped on Google Maps and using the address, I was able to see what the, the environment was like that they were living in from the city directories. And I could see just exactly how close these people were living to each other in a place called Miles Alley near 2nd Street. Okay, so these little houses are so close together that, you know, you could throw a rock and hit the front door from one house to the other. So it really started to kind of bring to life this story. Then I did targeted research for this couple, their names, their, you know, the dates that I had collected to make sure there were no other people by the same name and to make sure that I had the right people. In doing so, I revealed that there were other people by the same name, but as it turns out, they were their children and some siblings and some other family members that you could quickly discern where they were in the family tree. Comparing the estimated birth dates, names and occupations helped me to separate those with the names of the original couple. Now in this clip from another episode about occupations, I'll show you how I tied those ancestors together and how I broke them apart. Over here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have ten records that say he's a machinist. Now it was time to do some fan club research. You know, the cluster research. This is where you research the friends, associates, and neighbors of the ancestor in which uh, you are researching. Now the marriage certificate had two witnesses on it. It had Fanny Robinson and Marie L. Ferguson. Now, why would you want to research these people in this record? Well, hold that thought for a minute because I'm gonna show you why. Researching the others in the document, namely one of the witnesses, Fan Fanny Robinson, showed up in a school record. Now guess who also was listed in that school record? The bride, Catherine Havey. This was new information. Now she actually shows up in the 1870 census twice, both times as a domestic servant. She was age 22, white female, living in Mansfield, Burlington County, New Jersey, born in Ireland, both parents born in a foreign land. She was holding two jobs down. I'm telling you, this is the same woman in two different uh, 1870 uh, census records. Now. One was the school where Fanny Robinson was listed and one was the home of Moses Wills. Now, along the way, I started creating research notes for this couple. This allowed me to see everything in chronological order with details that are not easily seen on a profile on Ancestry or Family Search. I also added the source citations for each document that I found. 
Now, by now, I knew that that was the right couple associated with the marriage certificate. Then I turned to the descendancy research because it was the goal of the thrift shop to hand over this document to a living descendant. So conducting the research, I discovered a direct descendant who was an active member on Ancestry and her name was Irene. She had more documents and had been uh, the originator of several images from this couple. So that told me that she was likely a direct descendant and she was serious about genealogy enough that she might be a good candidate to receive this document. So I anxiously sent a message to Irene telling her this. I said, hi Irene, I see that you have shared some images for William T. DeWorth and Catherine Havey. I'm working on a story about this couple and I'm wondering if you are a descendant. Now remember, when messaging somebody for the first time, either through messaging on Ancestry or anywhere, less is more. I did not go into a 400 word novel about what was going on. If, that, if it's too much information, you may not get a response at all. And I really wanted a response. I was hoping she would respond. Well, two days later, she did. She wrote this. She said, hi, Connie. Uh, they are my great grandparents on my mother's side. I know very little about them, but I'm happy to share what I have. And she provided me her email address. So little did she know what was about to happen would change her life for at least for a few weeks. So I emailed her back and I told her I had some very exciting news and I sent her the Facebook link and the news story from WWAY. Then I contacted Carmen at the thrift shop and again we talked and told her that I found a direct descendant, a great granddaughter for this couple and her name was Irene. Well, now we had the research done. I had gotten to the point where I, I was confident in everything I had done. I kind of gone up the line and down the line and I had to get on a Zoom call with Irene and tell her what I found in my research. Well, thanks for responding because I really didn't think you would. Um, I think the odds are, I don't know, I should do some statistics. I think the odds are about 50-50 when people, whether they're going to respond or not. Really? And, yeah. And so I was like, oh, well, let's, let's hope, <laughs> you know. But it's still, you know, it's so um, interesting to me. I hadn't been on Ancestry in quite a while. And that I just happened to go on around the time when this was happening is really stunning to me. Well, we talked for about an hour and a half and I, you know, it was so much fun. And I talked about what I found and what she already knew. Now, she told me that her mother had been a genealogist before even computers had gotten a hold of the genealogy world. And she had taken some extensive notes about her parents and her grandparents. Now this was Irene's mother had taken these notes. Irene said she had information handed down through the family of Catherine Havey and that she had been born in County Clare, Ireland, but she had not been able to locate any records. Now she also said that Catherine had a sister named Annie Havey and that both of them had come to America and possibly together and they worked as a domestic servants for two different branches of the same family. Hmm, okay. Again, cluster research kicks in and I found Annie working as a domestic servant in the home of a guy named Edward Wills. Now, Katie, or Catherine, as she's known in some of her documents, she was also working as a domestic servant in the home of Moses Wills. Now, doing a little more digging, I found out that Moses was the father of Edward. So that supports the family lore that helps confirm Annie as a sister to Catherine. Researching immigration records for either of them, I could not find when or where they immigrated to the US. However, three census records showed that Catherine arrived uh, somewhere between 1863 and 1865. Well, the news media picked it up and it was WWAY who had the scoop and here's what they had to say. While cleaning a picture frame, a Hope Chest thrift employee found a nearly 150-year-old marriage license nailed inside the back. It was so old, only the year, city, and couple's first names, William and Katie, were legible. And this couple was married in New Jersey and somehow the certificate found its way to a thrift store on Old Ocean Highway in Bolivia, North Carolina. 
a unique find. So WWAY aired a story on the discovery. Not long after, while home in upstate New York, William and Katie DeWorth's great-granddaughter, Irene Cornish, decided to log into Ancestry.com on a whim. I haven't been on Ancestry in quite a few months, but was actually went on to research a family member on the other side, and I happened to notice I had these messages. Messages from viewers who were able to track Cornish down. Though Cornish doesn't know how this love story began, she knows her great-grandmother Catherine Havy moved to America toward the end of the Irish potato famine. Her great-grandfather William DeWorth had his own ventriloquy and fire-eating acts. Though the mystery isn't completely solved, Cornish says she feels more connected than ever to family she's only heard stories about. When my mother passed away five years ago, I don't have any family, immediate family in the area where I live. So I feel a little isolated at times. And so it just felt comforting that oh, these people are reaching out somehow. I am connected. In Brunswick County, Peyton Furtado, WWAY News. Well then, the Washington Post got a hold of it, uh, the Miami Herald, uh, Inside Edition. I mean, it, the list just keeps growing. Between all of that, Irene and the director at the Hope Test started talking and planning to return the marriage certificate to Irene. Now, Irene decided to come to North Carolina to see the document for herself. We all met in Bolivia at the Hope Chest thrift shop where the document was found and here's what happened. We all decided to meet on a Monday. When I arrived, the news magazine Inside Edition had a crew there shooting interviews. Well, this is all too exciting. Right over my shoulder here, there are two local news organizations interviewing Irene, who is the great granddaughter of the couple in the marriage certificate. And you know, the Inside Edition is inside right now also interviewing uh, the shopkeeper who found the document. So this is pretty cool, good stuff. All right, it's time to meet Pam Phelps. Now, if it were not for her finding the document in the back of a painting, none of this would have happened. We get a lot of donations and we can't figure out, who, we don't know who donated this one, but a lot of times people will just come in and do a donation and they'll drop them off. And that's what happened to this painting. And it was a picture of a little girl with um, a dog, and it was just very interesting. I took the back off, and when I did, it had a, a faint um, cover on the back, and when I unfolded it, that's where that marriage certificate was. I couldn't believe it. I, I just couldn't believe it. So I ran in there to Suzanne, who's our manager, and I said, look what I found. So we got the magnifying glass and started looking, you know, so we could see it better, and it, I, it was just amazing. Well, since that time, I've had a lot of conversations with Irene, and she told me that uh, her mother had handed down all this information and that the parents, one of the things she wrote me in one of her emails was that the parents died toward the end of the potato famine, and they were sent to live with two aunts in Ireland. They were also sponsored to come over from Ireland to work in what was called the Hilltop Hotel, and they lived with two different branches of the same family as we had talked about earlier, this turns out to be the Wills uh, family. And she said, my great grandmother died of pneumonia after falling on the ice and breaking some of her ribs. She said they bound her ribs at the time, which resulted in her developing pneumonia. It also should be noted that Fanny Robinson was the witness on the marriage certificate and appears in the 1870 census as a pupils in college, part of a list of pupils, and uh, which Kate, Havy, or I think she's listed as Harvey in that document, uh, was also listed and she is a domestic servant at that same school. Well, now while the marriage certificate between William DeWorth and Kate Havy is clearly dated 1875, it turns out it was not so clear. I had to look at it again. Irene corrected me when we both saw the document in person. If you look very close, it is 1872 and not 1875. Now it appears that the first child was born in 1873, which all, everything is lining up. For those who are channel members the, at the information access level, the patrons at the happy dance level are higher. Uh, there, I'm going to provide a research report and this uh, might be a great learning experience for those who wanna learn how to write research reports. And alternatively, you can find it at genealogytv.org. Okay, through all of my conversations, one of the comments that 
Irene said in a Zoom call really brought it home. Uh, everything about this, I'm still, I feel like this is going to sound a little, ooh, but I believe in these things. I almost feel like it all happened the way it did. Be, it's as if you're, your family is trying to reach out to you to get you connected to something that deals with them. I have family, but they're all at a distance. And since my mother died um, five, six years ago, I felt kind of isolated up here. I'm married and I love my husband and his family, but I don't have anybody that really knows me anywhere close by. And I have felt this odd sense of not belonging anywhere. To have this happen at a time when I'm feeling that so strongly for some reason, it's almost like family reaching out to you to say, you do belong to this greater family, even if they're not still here. Uh, it's, it's just stunning to me. I, it's like all the stars aligned that I would see this information. Okay, now with all the press lined up, myself included, I wanna show you the moment that Irene sees the certificate for the first time. Hi. Hi. I'm Pam, how are you? Good, Pam, nice to meet you. Here's your certificate. Oh, wow. I'm sorry. Is this gonna go home? <laughs> I still, awesome, I still can't believe it. <laughs> I found out about it and that I'm going to have it for my family. I yes. really, I'm sorry I'm excited I'm about it. so overwhelmed. We're glad you, that we I were can't, part of this story. You know, I can't isn't. tell you how grateful I am to Carmen and all of you that you cared enough to try yeah. to find the family <laughs> for this because we have so little. Yeah, I'm this really is just excited. amazing. Because family is, you know, it's just so important. It is. To, to it me. is. And I lost my mother. She had lived with me toward the end of her life. And I, don't, awesome. I don't know, losing your parents is a whole different experience. Yes. You feel a little adrift out there. And this just feels like bringing it home. They were reaching out somehow. That's right. I, that's, I agree with you. But that's awesome. I'm grateful to the people here and to Connie who reached out on Ancestry because I'd have never seen your Facebook post <laughs> and if it weren't for yeah. the people on Ancestry who took the time to search on these names that's how it they found me I know. and if they it's, hadn't messaged me amazing. I'd never known. It's amazing. That's just amazing. We're just excited to be part of it. Oh, it's beautiful too. Isn't what it? a beautiful really certificate. Is. I love it. I love it. And just incredibly grateful and humbled that that's why I had to come <laughs> here in person. <laughs> I had to meet the people that we cared you did. to do we, this. We I couldn't trust it to the mail. <laughs> this is it's incredible. Thank you. Well, you're I'm, so welcome. I feel so blessed to <laughs> you're and so, so lucky welcome. to have been reunited with this and yes. to be able to share it with the other surviving relatives yes. that of Katie Havey and William DeWord. <laughs> well, it was an exciting day and I just want to share this little tidbit with you. I sat down with Irene and Carmen at the end of the day and here's what we said. Irene, what do you think? It's been a crazy day. We have been at this, like, <laughs> we've had news stations, Inside Edition. You've been doing interviews nonstop since you got here. Are you exhausted? No, it's exciting. I, I keep thinking that somehow, through all the media attention, that maybe there's some additional information out there that through that I'll learn about it, which I think would be great. Like, wouldn't it be fun if somebody came forward and said, oh, that picture was hanging in my mother's house, and oh, it looks like she's somehow connected to the family, I think that would be cool. Well, um, I'm hoping that we get a ton of views on the YouTube channel that might help you with that. Um, so give us a little background about the couple. 
okay, I don't know a lot. What I know comes from my mom. So, and from what I've been able to document on Ancestry, my great-grandmother Katie, actually Catherine DeWorth, um, Catherine Havy, and then became DeWorth, she and her sister, her, their parents died toward the end of the potato famine in Ireland. Don't know if that's why they died, but they died. Her mother's sisters finished raising them, and then when Katie was 17, she came to the United States, to New Jersey, and I think the term they used then was indentured servant, but I don't know if they still use that term. But basically, she had to work as a domestic servant until she could pay off her passage. And I can document her and her sister being in these different homes in the 1870 census. So that's her backstory. And then my great grandfather, William Tyndall DeWorth, he's German ancestry. And do we have any idea where in Germany? Uh, Hamburg, Germany, supposedly. He could track his ancestors back to Peter Derwert of Hamburg, Germany. And based on um, some DNA stuff, I think that's pretty accurate. Um, about awesome. that and you know I can find a lot about him on Ancestry I think I, I told you I think I found out why his middle name was Tyndall it would appear that it was his grandmother's maiden name and we've noticed right everybody's naming their kids that's a huge clue it uh, is if, if we're trying to do some research right. in Germany right so um, and I know that he worked for the American Bridge Company. I have a clipping from a reprint of a 1926 picture where he, or 1926 article, where he was awarded a silver watch fob for his 30 years of service to that company. The other stories about him I just know from my mom, but he had a lot of interest. He was a machinist by trade, but he also, he built his own Ferris wheel, took it to local carnivals. I think to raise more money, right? And he had a ventriloquism act with his dummy Bobby, and he had a fire eating act. Wouldn't it be cool if I could find some documentation of oh that? Oh my God! Some old carnival Newspaper poster or something. or something. Yeah. Haven't found that yet, but at one time my mother actually had the ventriloquism dummy, and my uncle had the scale model of the Ferris wheel. So, you know, we, I know those stories are true because there were hard pieces. Carmen, what do you think of all this? <laughs> You're the director here with the, the thrift shop. Um, absolutely. So I'm the executive director of Hope Harbor Home, the Brunswick County's domestic violence program and shelter, and we operate the thrift stores to financially support the program. Um, this, it's amazing for me for two reasons. Number one, family is very important to me. Um, I know how I would feel if something like this got returned to me. So to be able to create that emotion for someone else is nothing compares to it. Um, but I think on the other side of things, I just think it just says a lot about what you can find in a thrift store and to mm -hmm. never underestimate the power um, that community has when they're on a mission. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so what's next? What's next for you? Um, well, more, what are you, more what are you going to do with the certificate? Well, get it home safely, first of all. I've let everybody in the family know I'm retrieving it, that I'm going to um, get it scanned in such a way that I can make prints for everyone. Not everybody's interested, I'll be right. honest with you. Uh, it's mixed. Um, I have seen photographs of it popping up already on Ancestry, just, just to let you know. Good. Mm -hmm. I didn't put it up there, but somebody That's did. That's great. Well, I'm reaching out to two other people who have these people distantly in their family tree to f try to find out how I'm connected to yeah. them. Um, haven't had any responses yet. But I want to get it to what family members are interested. Um, I'm curious, have you taken a DNA test? I've done all three. I've okay. done Ancestry, 23andMe, and Family Tree. Well, there might be some, you know, German and Irish clues there. Yes, I, you know, it's odd um, with all the German names like DeWorth and Detterer and 
I, but it's how you inherit DNA, right? I come out being 90 plus percent Irish. Yeah, that can happen. So but, let's talk about the Irish connection for a mm -hmm. second. What county do we know you from? County your mother? Clare, from what my mother. County said. Clare. And, but I haven't been able to document that. I've been to County Clare very briefly. Really hope to go back and maybe go to the Heritage Center, see. Havy does not seem to be a name that rings any bells initially, but, you All know, right. who knows? I, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to challenge the people who are watching this that have that have knowledge about German ancestry and Irish ancestry. I have also created uh, a document that has all of the stuff that I found. I'm going to challenge you guys to help Irene figure out this Irish connection and the German connection with the information uh, that she has. So great. yeah, I'm hoping that you guys can figure it out. Thank you both. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and you guys are great. Thank you both because it's thanks to you two that Carmen and I, you should have seen us. It's over the weekend, we were sitting there flying text messages back and forth to each other. I, was, I think I found her. <laughs> I think I found the descendant. I, I thought it was so funny when I talked to you that you said, oh, I'm so glad you answered me. And like in my mind, I can't figure how would someone not answer you? Well, let me tell you. But there's, a, you know, and a lot of people, I get this question on the YouTube channel a lot. Why aren't people answering my messages on Ancestry? And there's a lot of reasons why they don't. They could be dead. They could have abandoned their account. They could be what we call DNA tourists, where they just get a DNA test done, and then they go away and never come back. They just mm -hmm. want to see what their ethnicity estimates were, and then they go away. So, I mean, there's a lot. I would say 30 to 40% of people don't respond. Mm -hmm. And so, or it might take a year or so for them to respond. And sure. I'm so glad that you responded right away. You responded within like 24 hours. Well, that's what was so <laughs> stunning to me, right? Well, I'm glad you came <laughs> all the way to North Carolina to pick this up in person. Oh, I, it is so nice to meet you. It's so nice to meet you too. And Carmen, I had to. it's nice to meet you and thank you for, yeah. for all you guys do here. Absolutely. Thank yes. you. And uh, hopefully you have an opportunity to shop while you're here. You oh. might find something else that belongs to you. Well, family. I have to buy something <laughs> as a souvenir. The other thing that I think you know, it's a side link, but I think to me it's important, is what your mission is to help victims of domestic violence and abuse. And my mother in her first marriage certainly was. And so there's that interesting little connection too. It's karma. It is. And by the way, look yeah. over your shoulder. Yeah. It's a family plan. Yes, <laughs> that's true. It's true. I thought it was appropriate. It is appropriate. All right. Well, but hopefully you guys will help out and 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 figure out the uh, Irish and German connection somewhere. I need some of you guys who are really good at that. To, yes. To help Irene. I would love to out. go to County Clare and actually go where she came from. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now I want you to meet Carmen Smith. She is the woman who put all of this together. She is the glue that holds this whole thing together because she's the one that originally uh, I reached out to from the Facebook post and kept communicating with. She is the director between all of the thrift shops and boy, hats off to Carmen for, for pulling this one off. It, it was really something. Hats off to Pam uh, for really having the initiative to kind of take the extra step to pull that painting apart and discovered the marriage certificate in the first place. Who knows what would have happened. God bless the volunteers at the thrift shop. If you want to learn more about the thrift shop and how you might be able to help support their cause and the domestic violence shelter, let me show you this clip. Well, Carmen, Everybody's inside. We got Inside Edition. We got WECT, WWAY. Everybody's inside fighting over space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what I want to ask you is tell us about the charity that this thrift shop supports. I, I thoroughly appreciate that question um, because that's for me what it's all about. Um, so Hope Harbor Home is Brunswick County's only domestic violence program and shelter and we are financially supported by the operation of these three thrift stores. So Hope Chest here in Bolivia, we have one in Leland and one in Oak Island. 
And Hope Harbor Home strives to bring an end to domestic violence and provide services to clients who are fleeing from active abuse. So the clients that we're working with are actively fleeing from abuse that's happening on a day-to-day -day basis. Our trained advocates help them get jobs, find housing, get in touch with counselors so they can work on their mental health, um, help them in the court system, helping them get criminal warrants and restraining orders, and truly aid them in rebuilding their lives. It's, it's tough and it's not something that a lot of people like to talk about, but one out of every four women are a victim of domestic violence and one out of every seven men are as well. And that's happening in Brunswick County um, and we're working to bring it to an end. You are good people. I appreciate you saying that. Thank you for what you do, both on the domestic violence front and for helping reunite this uh, marriage certificate with, with Irene. Now, if people want to help support your mm -hmm. cause, tell us how to do that. Um, like I said, have the domestic violence program and the domestic violence shelter. So you can mail financial contributions to our P.O. Box, which is P.O. Box 230, Supply, North Carolina. Um, or you can, you know, call our office and talk to us about different ways to make a donation. Our phone number is 910-754-5726. Well, there you have it. The whole story. And it's been an absolute blast putting this this story together. This one, I think this is probably one of my favorite stories that I've ever done. So uh, it was fun to be able to find all of the documents and the research and everything to help put the two together, to put Irene together with the uh, thrift shop. It, it, was, it was so much fun. So, you know, I love a good mystery and, and that one uh, certainly was easy enough uh, to, to resolve in three days worth of research and then the rest has just been candy ever since. So there you have it. Uh, there is a research report available if you want to see it. I do challenge you to um, help Irene try and find the Irish connection and or the German connection. She knows nothing about that side of her family. And as you can tell, it's kind of an emotional tie to her because she really doesn't have a lot of connections on that side of her family. So, uh, you know, if you, if you want to try and, and dig into that and see what you can find, that would be awesome. There you have it. I hope you enjoyed the show. There are more videos on the screen for your binge watching pleasure. So until next time, keep on climbing your family tree.